Caesar, Caesar, what are you doing? What? Why are you trying to open a can with a hammer? Because you're hungry. Oh, well, hey, dude, dude, can opener. Try, try a can opener, not, not a hammer. Oh, no, 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 Caesar, that's not how you open a can. You, ha you know, you have to like, let me help you. You have to, wait, Caesar, this can doesn't need a can opener. You had it upside down. It has a flip top, silly bear. But why are you eating SpaghettiOs? And Larry, Larry, why are you eating macaroni and cheese? Lunch was hours ago. Snack. Oh, Larry. I'm hungry. I'm sorry. I can't help it. I know. You're just all bones. You're hungry all the time. Okay, well, you know, I, I really... <laughs> Caesar! <laughs> I know you're hungry. And I promise... I'll make dinner very shortly, but I, I was thinking that maybe I could read a story to my kids. Can we read a story to the kids? And I've got the best story since you're eating. We can read a story about a tall tale about a time when food fell from the sky. How crazy is that? Can you imagine SpaghettiOs flying from the sky? Rah, 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 I know, right in your mouth. You love that. And Larry, macaroni and cheese. Oh, I don't want to disturb you. Sorry, buddy. Right it from the sky, landing in your open mouth to consume. Would you like me to tell you that story? All right, well, how about you move, and I will read your story to you and all my kids. Okay, and then I'll feed you guys. All right, so the story I want to read today, everybody, is called Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, and it is written by Judy and Ron Barrett. This is a great story. It's about a tall tale, and this week in our Imagine Your Story Summer Reading Program, we're going to talk about tall tales, and a lot of tall tales we're familiar with are like Paul Bunyan, Johnny Appleseed, Pecos Bill, and then there's some more not so familiar tall tales. Um, and this is a good example of one of those not so familiar ones. So I thought I'd read one of these for you guys today. So Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. All right. We were all sitting around the big kitchen table. It was Saturday morning, pancake morning. Mom was squeezing oranges for orange juice. Henry and I were betting on how many pancakes we could each eat. And Grandpa was doing the flipping. I like flipping pancakes. Seconds later, something flew through the air, headed towards the kitchen ceiling, and landed right on Henry. Oh, no. After we realized that the flying object was only a pancake, we all laughed, even Grandpa. Breakfast continued quite uneventfully. All the other pancakes landed in the pan, and all of them were eaten, even the one that had landed on Henry. I hope that one was eaten by Henry. Larry, you dropped your spoon. Are you that surprised? That night, touched off by the pancake incident at breakfast, Grandpa told us the best tall tale bedtime story he'd ever told. Across an ocean, over lots of huge bumpy mountains, across three hot deserts, and one smaller ocean, there lay the tiny town of Chew and Swallow. Bum, bum, bum. In most ways, it was very much like any other tiny town. It had a main street lined with stores, houses with trees and gardens around them, a schoolhouse about 300 people, and some assorted cats and dogs. But there were no food stores in the town of Chew and Swallow. They didn't need any. The sky supplied all the food they could ever possibly want. The only thing that was really different about Chew and Swallow was its weather. It came three times a day at breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Everything that everyone ate came from the sky. Whoa! From the sky. Whatever the weather served, that was what they ate. But it never rained rain and it never snowed snow, and it never blew just wind. It rained things like soup and juice. Oh, Larry, soup and juice. Yum, yum, yum. And it snowed mashed potatoes and green peas. And sometimes the wind blew in storms of hamburgers. Woohoo! Yum, 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 yum. I don't like hamburgers. The people could watch the weather report on television in the morning, and they would even hear a prediction for the next day's food. 
When the townspeople went outside, they carried their plates, cups, glasses, forks, spoons, knives, and napkins with them. That way, they would always be prepared for any kind of weather. If there were leftovers, and there usually were, the people took them home and put them in the refrigerators in case they got hungry between meals. What a brilliant idea. Good thinking, people. The menu varied. By the time they woke up in the morning, breakfast was coming down. After a brief shower of orange juice, low clouds of sunny-side-up eggs moved in, followed by pieces of toast. Butter and jelly sprinkled down for the toast, and most of the time it rained milk afterwards. Oh, how thirsty. For lunch one day, frankfurters already in their rolls blew in from the northwest at about five miles an hour. There were mustard clouds nearby, and then the wind shifted to the east and brought in baked beans. Yum. A drizzle of soda would finish the meal. That sounds like a pretty good lunch. Dinner one night consisted of lamb chops becoming heavy at times with occasional ketchup. Periods of peas and baked potatoes were followed by a gradual clearing with a wonderful jello setting in the west. Ooh, I like Jello. The sanitation department of Chew and Swallow had a rather unusual job for sanitation department. It had to remove all the food that fell on the houses, the sidewalks, and the lawns. The workers clear, cleaned things up after every meal and fed the dogs and cats. Then they emptied some of it into the surrounding oceans for the fish and the turtles and whales to eat. The rest of the food was put back into the earth so that the soil would be richer for the people's flower gardens. Ooh. I wonder if they get as many weeds in their flower gardens as I get in mine. Life for the townspeople was delicious until the weather took a turn for the worse. Spaghetti ties up town? Oh no! One day there was nothing but gorgonza cheese all day long. Ew. The next day there was only broccoli all overcooked. And the next day, there were Brussels sprouts and peanut butter with mayonnaise. Yuck! Another day, there was a pea soup fog, and no one could see where they were going. They could barely find the rest of the meal that got stuck in the fog. Oh, dear. The food was getting larger and larger, and so were the portions. The people were getting frightened. Violent storms blew up frequently. Awful things were happening. One Tuesday, there was a hurricane of bread and rolls all day long and into the night. There were soft rolls and hard rolls, some with seeds and some without. There was white bread and rye bread and whole wheat toast. And most of it was larger than they had ever seen bread and rolls before. It was a terrible day. Everyone had to stay indoors. Roofs were damaged. And the sanitation department was beside itself. The mess took the workers four days to clean up. There, and the sea was full of floating rolls. To help out, the people piled up as much bread as they could in their backyards. The birds picked at it a bit, but it just stayed there and got staler and staler. Gross. There was a storm of pancakes one morning and a downpour of maple syrup flooded the town. A huge pancake covered the school. No one could get it off because of its weight. So they had to close the school. Oh dear. Lunch one day brought 15 inch drifts of cream cheese and jelly sandwiches. Everyone ate themselves sick and the day ended with a stomach ache. Ugh. There was an awful salt and pepper wind accompanied by an even worse open tomato tornado. <laughs> People were sneezing themselves silly and running to avoid the tomatoes. The town was a mess and there were seeds and pulp everywhere. The sanitation department gave up. The job was just too big. Everyone feared for their lives they couldn't go outside most of the time, and many houses had been badly damaged by giant meatballs. Stores were boarded up, and there was no more school for the children. 
So a decision was made to abandon Chun, the town of Chu and Swallow. It was a matter of survival. And now it's raining donuts. The people glued together the giant pieces of stale bread, sandwich style, with peanut butter, and took the absolute necessities with them, and set sail on their rafts for a new land. Wow. After being afloat for a week, they finally reached a small coastal town, which welcomed them. The bread had held up surprisingly well, well enough for them to build temporary houses for themselves out of it at least. The children began school again, and the adults all tried to find places for themselves in the new land. The biggest change they had to make was getting used to buying food at a supermarket. They found it odd that food was kept on shelves, packaged in boxes, cans, and bottles. Meat that had to be cooked was kept in large refrigerators. Nothing came down from the sky, except rain and snow. The clouds above their heads were not made of fried eggs and no one ever got hit by a hamburger again. And nobody dared to go back to, to the town of Chew and Swallow to find out what had happened to it. They were all too afraid. Henry and I were awake until the very end of Grandpa's story. I remember his goodnight kiss. The next morning we woke up to see snow falling outside of our window. We ran downstairs for breakfast and ate a little faster than usual so we could go sledding with Grandpa. It's funny, but even as we were sliding down the hill, we thought we saw a giant pat of butter at the top, and we could almost smell the mashed potatoes. The end. Wasn't that a great story, Larry? Caesar? Did you enjoy that story? Yes, you did. And how about you, Larry? Did Larry? Larry? Did you eat all of your mac and cheese? Yeah. Larry? You didn't even share! Poor Caesar over here is like starving. Poor Caesar. I didn't know he liked mac and cheese. Well, I think he really likes pizza. Caesar, calm down. Caesar, should I go make you a grilled pizza? Should we make it as big as your head? That would be pretty awesome, wouldn't it? Yeah. How about you, Larry? Do I need to make you something to go with your mac and cheese? No. You want a cup of soup? Uh, sure. Okay, I'll make you some soup to go with your mac and cheese. And yes, Caesar, I will make you some pizza for you. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed our story, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. It's a great tall tale. It's a lot of fun. I've always thought that would be an amazing town to live in until I got hit in the head with a giant hamburger. That wouldn't be so cool. But it's a fun story, and I hope you enjoyed it. And we look forward to seeing you guys again next week when we talk about... Do, do, do. Aesop's Fables. Shh. All right, guys, have a good week. We'll see you later. Bye.